Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, around the world. Welcome to my channel. Um, for all my subscribers, thank you for your support. If it's the first time you're passing through, please like and subscribe. This is a black-centred channel, but a not black-focused channel. So I cover areas, all kinds of areas that affect everyone. And sometimes they're more um, Pacific to my people, sometimes it's more Pacific to my country, and sometimes it's more Pacific to my heritage. But by and large, I talk about issues that affect us all and to bring us a closer understanding so that we can understand each other and have different viewpoints. And I can tell you stuff and you can comment so you expand my understanding. I get to learn stuff and um, stuff like that. So I like to think that this is a combined um, effort and that we share and we um, do things in a nice, respectful way. Um, today I wanted to talk about um, Tom Tuckenhart's um, suggestion that Hong Kong nationals in China should be given a British passport. And he said it should have been done back in 1997. I'm not quite sure why he's bringing it up now, but apparently it's because of the protesting. And so he seems to have some kind of obligation um, that uh, instead of giving them British over overseas, sorry, British national overseas passports, they should have had British passports and become British citizens from 1997. So it's a bit of a provocative statement to make, especially when you're dealing with a country um, like China who doesn't like foreign interference and who sees his proposal as foreign interference. Now, um, just a little background. In 1997, um, the UK um, handed over Hong Kong to China. It's almost like it's like a bag of shopping, isn't it? I don't see how you can hang, hand over a race of people anyway, but that's what happened. And at that time, they gave them British national passport, overseas passports, which, allow, which did not allow them to live or work in the UK. So I'm not quite sure what their function was. If, as Tom Huckenhart says, he's the senior foreign affairs officer and he's an MP, um, he's saying that why didn't they, as far as I'm concerned, if he's concerned now, why didn't they give them British passports back then? If, if after reflection, after all these years, 22 years later, you're going to say, oh, well, we should have done it, you know, but now there's this protest going on. I think it's time to do it now. You can't just do that. You know, like, um, it's really, really difficult to know how to help, when to help, who to help. But you need to look after your own people first. Number one, if but if as protesters, if it's because they're protesting and you're worried about their welfare and their health and, you know, whether or not they're going to be tortured or whether or not they're going to be hurt, that means you are assuming that they're going to be asylum seekers when they come over. And if they're asylum seekers, um, you haven't even got space to look after the ones you've got. You know, half of them are in detention centres. The rest are under London Bridge or homeless or on the street. So are you subjecting? Are you? Is he saying that he's going to subject the people from Hong Kong to come who, who are coming to England for a British passport? Are they going to go through that same laborious um, and tenuous process that foreign nationals are going through at the moment we're trying to get their british passports on similar grounds they are entitled to their british passports but they're waiting 18 months two years and goodness knows how long you can't have one rule for one and another rule for another and you can't just move the goalposts as you go along on the one hand you're saying you want to reduce net migration and on the other hand you're saying oh well all those people in Hong Kong, all those Hong Kong um, nationals have a right to be British citizens. I haven't got no I haven't got no say on that. But all I've got to say is that you need to get you need to have a standard practice that applies to everyone, because these are the kind of things that cause problems. So um, I'm not quite sure 
what um, how this situation is going to go. All I know is that there is a possibility for um, people for, who were born in Hong Kong um, to apply for British citizenship, fast track, if they had a British national overseas passport before 1997. Apparently the Chinese Republic are saying that um, people in Hong Kong who have Chinese ancestry have no British allegiance at all. They're not British, he's saying. But um, I was I was watching, no, I was actually reading. I guess I read and do watch so much stuff. Reading something by Cora. And Cora actually said that um, people um, from Hong Kong, if they were born in Hong Kong before 1997 and they had the British national overseas passport, they could apply for a fast track British citizenship. They could also apply for um, a resident, uh, a right of abode if they had a work permit, but they'd need the work permit before they entered into the UK. And that was another way of getting um, citizenship through registration, which costs which costs a thousand pounds as opposed to naturalization. So it is it is a bit um I'm not quite sure how Tom Hucken 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 Hutt, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, um, was thinking with that provocative tweet. And then you know these people tweeting, your 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 prime ministers, your MPs, your you know, presidents tweeting. It's such an informal um, way to communicate. And once you've sent it out there, you can't take it back. If you've had second thoughts, you can't take it back. What's happened to a system when things were written formally? Why are these people tweeting and causing havoc with their statements? I don't understand it because the thing is you can have a thought, you can tweet it and think it's a good thought and then after reflect on reflection you're going to think, oh, well maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe I shouldn't have tweeted that. Maybe I should have said it in a different way. You know, it's it's not a wise method of communication, this Twitter. Twitter is, was meant, I mean, I think Twitter was meant to just have people's thoughts in a, in a few amount of words, but have you noticed? I don't know if you use Twitter, but it's actually expanded. You can use actually more words now. I think it was, I forget how many characters it was limited to, but they've expanded those characters. So you can actually write more. But it was, for me, I th think it was just an informal way of communicating, writing little comments. But now it's being used by officials. And officials really need to know that it's, a, it's, it's still a responsibility when you tweet and so now, of course, um, Tom Huckentart's um, tweet has got out, is causing controversy, and hence me making this video, and probably other people will be doing ones like it. And yeah, um, let me just make sure I've covered most things. It's Tuck and Hutt, I think, how you pronounce it. Senior British MP of the UK Foreign Affairs Committee. And he's suggesting that the UK open all its doors to Hong Kong Chinese and give them full British citizenship because of the protest escalation. Apparently, he says this should have been done in 1997 when the Brits handed over the rights of the Hong Kongers to the Chinese. Um, Hong Kong became a British colony in 1842. Um, yeah, UK's past is definitely coming back to haunt them because, like I said, you know, sometimes I think for him to make a statement like that, he must have a sense of obligation. You know, people are always saying, why is the UK getting involved in other people's business? Why are they doing that? It's because they've they've gone in to all these other countries. And they're the reason why those countries are in the mess that they're in a lot of the times. They haven't quite recovered even over all these centuries. So in certain situations, um, we have people like Tom Huck and Tuck, what is his name? Tuck and, Tuck and Hutt, who feel they have a responsibility or an obligation to people that they handed over when maybe they shouldn't have handed them over. Who knows? I don't know what that situation was. I don't know why they handed them over. I don't know who why they were theirs to hand over. I mean, these are people. 
How do you hand over a race of people? You know, it's beyond me, but it's like when they, with the slave trade, they just took people out of a country and took them to another country, ill-treated them, and then when they finished with them, they just sent them on their way. You know, they used to call people chattels. They weren't, they didn't consider them humans. And this is another example. You know, when you say you're handed over Hong Kong to the Chinese, it's almost like they're chattels. It's almost like they're not people. So I'm not quite sure how, what's in the mindset when people do that. Um, people, People's Republic of China does not recognise Hong Kongers with Chinese ancestry as British. And that's according to Wikipedia. Um, apparently, um, they don't want them to have recourse to British assistance, which is what Tom Tockenhart is doing or trying to do or suggesting. However, um, I have I think I've said this before. However, if um, they were born in Hong Kong before ni before the 1997 handover to China and applied for a British national overseas passport before 1997, the passport may give them fast track to becoming British citizens through registration rather than naturalisation. However, they'll need a work permit to enter the UK in the first place. In some circumstances, they may qualify for a right to abode in the UK, which will basically give them the right as British citizens according to Cora. To qualify, they must be registered through the right of abode scheme before 1997. So that means 22 years ago, you would have needed to have known you needed to apply for the right to abode scheme. Alternatively, having a direct family member served in the British Garrison or Royal Hong Kong Regiment might qualify them for right of abode. And I think that is all for now. So I hope you found this useful. Bye bye.